Hey guys, um, sorry for my looks, I'm having a bad pain day. I have these sometimes. Um, I was sent a, uh, a video, uh, oh, Levi Price, and one of the things I realized is, uh, it's really hard for people to receive a gift. Because, you know, in our world, when it says a free gift, there's a catch to it. It's, you know... You get a free vacation, they're trying to tell, uh, you know, sell you a timeshare. Or if you get something free at the grocery store, they're trying to sell you something. People aren't good at receiving, and um, that's what we have to do. Real humility here is realizing that there's nothing good in us, and that we don't have anything to offer God, except simply believing what He says. And that's that Christ, and, the, and again, the Gospels, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Christ died for our sins according to scriptures, was buried, and rose again on the third day according to scriptures. That's what saved us. Paul makes it clear. He said, this is the gospel I preached. The one you received wherein you stand. The one that saved us. It's past tense. People just can't believe it. I, you know, it's funny because they mock it as easy believism. But apparently it's just not easy to believe. Because they just can't believe it. Um... And, and I'm, I've had somebody send me something saying, stop using Matthew 7, 21 to prove your point. That's not true. It's out of context. Well, let me tell you, it is true. And this is how I know. Matthew 7, 21 says, Lord, Lord, didn't we preach in your name? Didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we do many wonderful works in your name? Now, and then Jesus says, depart from me. Ye who work iniquity, and iniquity is to be unequal with God. You need God's perfect righteousness imputed on your account by faith, or you're unequal with God, because your righteousness is filthy rags, no matter how good you live. Even if you stop sinning, if you could, you can't, because you're going to sin in your, at least in your thoughts every day. And Jesus said, if you hate a brother, you murdered him. If you lust, you've committed adultery. So, um... You know, and he says, depart from me, you work in equity. I never knew you, only those who do the will of the Father. And it's clear I've given you the scripture that the will of the Father is that all who believe on him, he, will, he, he shall lose none and he'll raise them up the last day. He'll give them eternal life. It's believing on Christ is the will of the Father. This is the work of God that you believe on he whom he sent. So uh, it's very clear to me those people were boasting to Jesus about what they did for God okay but salvation is what God did for us okay it's not what we do for him once we're saved trusting completely in what Christ did for us so you don't trust what Christ did as not enough believing is not enough well it's not believing that saves you it's the death burial and resurrection of Jesus that saved you and believing faith is the vehicle by which you receive it okay so what they're really saying is that what Jesus did is not enough. I'm sorry, I'm in a lot of pain right now. And I don't like to take a lot of pain medicine before doing these because it makes me tired. All right. Let me um, play this, Levi. I, I, I'll stop it, okay? But just let it sit in your spirit and see what it feels like to you. I'm trying to train your, your, your spiritual ears to hear false teaching here. Debate in the in the Christian community that works don't save you. You're saved by faith, and I want to clarify what I believe to be the truth behind this. <clears throat> we have to repent from all of our sins. Repenting means turning away. Stop doing it. Turn from lying, cheating, gossiping, fighting, quarreling, sh strife, bitterness, resentment, uh, hatred, unforgiveness, sexual sins, adultery, fornicating, stealing, anything and everything against God. We have to turn from former thoughts of other religions. What you were just given there was the law. Under the law, abstaining from bad things and doing the good things is what gained favor. But under grace, it's resting, entering into the rest of Christ's finished work. See, the law was never supposed to be something that we kept to earn salvation. It was to stop our mouths, to make us guilty before God, to show us that we couldn't keep it, 
and therefore needed to rest in what God could do for us. You know, it's never to, because if it was about what we're doing, stop all the, does that sound like a, my yoke is easy and my burden is light? All that stuff he told you you just had to do? Is that, is that resting in what Christ did? No, it's all about what you're doing. Okay, salvation is nothing about what you're doing. Under the law, it's about what you're doing or not doing. Under grace, it's what Christ did. Okay? It, it hurts my heart. I wasn't feeling good enough to do a video today, but I, I, I had to do it because I'm... That, that's not an easy uh, burden. Um, it's not an easy yoke. Salvation is for him that worketh not, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly. He's telling you, try to be godly to be saved. But he justifies the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. Okay, we have to divide the word. All of the things in the four Gospels were to Jews under the law. And Jesus is trying to show them how the kingdom works. It's the gospel of the kingdom. It's sowing and reaping. Okay, he was offering the kingdom, which they rejected. All right? But also, to show them how they didn't keep the law. Like the rich young, you didn't keep the law since your youth. He's upping the standards to show you how you don't keep the law and that you must trust in him to save you. Okay, but these people don't trust Christ to save them. All right? This is law you're hearing. This isn't grace. Religious systems and ideas of salvation. We have to turn from everything that's against God, change our minds, submit and commit very clear that those who overcome I, I'd like to let you know that um, repent does not mean to turn from sin it's a change of mind you can repent of sins it depends on what you're being told to repent of and I've done videos on what each person is saying to repent of in those verses you can look at my repentance go to my channel and look on videos on repentance I did want explaining every verse that said repent and believe. Some were saying to repent of crucifying the Lord, believe on him. And then some were, uh, Paul was telling the Athenians to repent of their idolatry and believe on Christ. So uh, it was never a general blanket statement to keep the law. Because to turn from sin is to keep the law. I've, I've told you guys that a ton of, time, some, ton of times. Sin is a transgression of the law. So to repent of transgressing the law would mean to keep the law. That's all he's telling you to do is to keep the law to save yourself. They, they don't know what repent means, but I sent him a message telling him, you know, showing him the Greek that metamelamai meant to turn from sin or to feel sorry for sin. That's not the word they use. It's metanoia or metaneo, which is to change your mind. So he put change your mind, but change your mind about sin. There is a great deception in the world. He just said you have to overcome to be saved. All right. I, I, I don't want to let you miss that here. The Bible is very clear that the, if you don't hang on, you're not saved. Not, now he's telling you how you got to endure to the end. Fade away and All right. How can you rest knowing so that you may know? I tell you these things so that you may know. You have eternal life. This is what John says. How can you know you have it if you can fall away and lose it? And how do you know if you're overcoming? And is that peace that surpasses all understanding? No, you can know it because you're putting all your trust in the cross. See, these people don't do it God's way. See, they see a lot of professing Christians that have a false gospel that have tried to clean up their life and then they get sick of trying to live up to it. Then they go live a debaucherous life. But people that are born of God, that have trusted God's way, the biblical way, simply trusting in the shed blood of Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection. That's the gospel. They're born of God. And they don't love sin. I, I'm sick of people saying, oh, you just love your sin. You don't want to turn from your sin. You know what? The only people that's ever helped me or stepped up to be there for me were people that were abiding in God's grace. All these heretics talking about all their good works and all the sin they repent they don't do anything they've never done anything good i've never seen any person in this doctrine do anything but tell me that my illness is a punishment from god and if i had real faith i'd be healed well either heal me or shut up i'm just sick of it you know Ugh, just 
it, it's horrifying to me what I see out there. I rest in Christ. How is this? My yoke is easy and my burden is light. He's telling you here, you got to overcome. You didn't overcome anything. Jesus is the one that says, uh, I overcame the world. Let me tell you what overcoming is here. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. It's trusting in Christ because he overcame. Let me see what you're getting here. You're getting a bunch of garbage is what the you're getting. The fifth and final thing that I see Five that we things have to do is we have to, to hold saved. on to this pattern until the very end. If we let go of salvation, salvation was not rooted and grounded and deeply implanted into our hearts and it will it will fade away and we will not have salvation. We cannot change our minds. If we change our minds, then our minds were not born of God. Born, Being born of God means you literally receive his spirit in you and you hang on to it until the bitter end. Okay, we must... I had to pause that. I, I, I couldn't breathe for a second. So he's telling you that you got to keep yourself saved. All right, it... it it's God that keeps you saved. He's the one that promises that no one will snatch you out of his hands. And it's the Father's will that he should lose none. You don't have any power here, people. This, this is what drives me crazy. They're telling you it's all about you and what you're doing. That's the law. The law is doing. Grace is believing in what's done. Do you understand that? These people aren't saved. I'm sorry. Sorry. If they, they may have been saved at one point, but I don't know why the Holy Spirit's not bearing witness to the truth. And some of you that are confused, you're probably saved, and the Spirit's telling you, no, 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 that's wrong. And so you're seeking truth right now. And that's why I do this every day, because I know the damage this does. You're not keeping yourself saved by hanging on to the Holy Spirit, okay? And, and it's not you hanging on to him. It's not like he'll, he'll leave you. Your spirit is reborn of God. You have a brand new spiritual person living in there. That's the new man. You can't be unborn. He's acting like the spirit comes and just leaves you. If you don't hang on to him, you going to grab his foot. You know, it's like just silly. Silly. Here he is talking about overcoming now and enduring to the end. You must overcome until the end. Many people will try things and fall away. They are not saved. If you... See, it's all about your works. Anyway, you must overcome, endure to the end. Okay, he just mixed up a bunch of verses there. Enduring to the end are the Jews under the tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble. I think it's Matthew 24, 25, where he's warning Israel all these terrible things and how the nations are going to rise against nation. And he's saying, but whoever endures to the end, he, um, he shall be saved. That's because if you're enduring or surviving, by the end of the tribulation, he's going to return and you'll be saved. That has nothing to do with the body of Christ and enduring in faith. That has nothing to do with it. See, they take stuff out of context. It's the unlearned, unstable, resting scriptures. Why is this guy teaching? He doesn't even, he, oh, I, I don't know how he's saved. I don't. I, uh, if he trusted Christ as a kid or something, maybe he's still saved and just confused. But I can tell you this. I will tell you this. This man was not called by God to teach. I can tell you that. Not. And you can say, oh, I suffer not a woman to teach. Well, God himself said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh in the last days. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, preach God's word. Okay? And there were many uh, women that shared the gospel and taught the gospel in, new t in the New Testament. So... Uh, those that verse was given in the context of husbands and wives to carnal people and besides that Paul said there's no more male or female in Christ Jesus and he said uh, in the context of husbands and wives saith the law okay we're not under the law all right so we've got to divide the word and stop using that every time you see me and you hate God's grace so you want to shut me down you will not shut me down people are getting saved on this channel all right, I'm going to give you a little bit more. I can't take much more of it. Hold on, I'm going to pause you here until I find the part. Um, I'll just let it play. Others. So that's the fourth thing. We have to obey the laws of love and the laws of obeying the faith. 
the fifth and final thing that I see that we have to do is we have to hold on to this pattern until the very end. If we let go of salvation, salvation was not rooted and grounded and deeply implanted into our hearts and it will it will fade away and we will not have salvation. We cannot change our minds. If we change our minds, then our minds were not born of God. Born, Being born of God means you literally receive his spirit in you and you hang on to it until the bitter end. Okay, we must overcome until the end. Many people will try things and fall away. They are not saved. If you give up, you're not saved. If you don't hang on, you're not saved. Not live in habitual, continuous, willful, allowing sin to overrun our lives and think that we're born of God. All right, he just used that willful sin again. All right, that's another person not understanding Hebrews. Hebrews should give every person that saved security and not fear and doubt. I've told you many times, the willful sin it says, if we sin willfully after that, we've had the knowledge of the truth. There isn't, there remains no sacrifice for sin. See, you can't sin after your sin is garbage. Cause Paul, Saint Paul still sin. Come on, you can never get sinless perfection until we're given our glorified body. We should strive, you know, but it's not really striving. It's just letting the Spirit guide us daily. And then when we fail, we have an intercessor for uh, Christ liveth, to, uh, ever liveth to make intercession for us. So that willful sin was denying the sufficiency of the death, burial, and resurrection, the sacrificial death of Jesus as being enough and going back to animal sacrifice. See, there's no more sacrifice for sins because God won't accept the animal sacrifice. The willful sin was going back to Levitical law, which is what he's telling you to do, okay? To keep the law to save yourself. That was the willful sin. It wasn't a blanket statement of sinning. Okay, I'll play a little bit more, but I, I can't take much more of it. I'm, it makes me sick. Till the end, we'll be saved. There is a great deception in the world religious systems teaching once you're saved, you're always saved. And they give you this fake and phony superficial faith. And, 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 and it's a deception. It's a Pride. false salvation with a false faith. And I do believe that many will think that they're saved who are not yeah like you all right pride here okay these people are thinking look at those they're faith alone people they're, they don't they love their sin they don't want to let go you know what every person i know saved by god's grace they are the most loving compassionate unjudgmental people because they know their salvation was a gift and they rest in him now, I know people that are saved that are, up, you know, still live like the world, too. But he talks about that in the parable of the sower. Those people are still saved, but they are not bearing fruit for the Lord. That doesn't, but we're not saved by us and what we're doing and bearing fruit, okay? That's our response. That's why Paul says, I beseech you. He's begging them. Present yourself a living sacrifice. See, he's telling, if it was an automatic thing that just happens to prove you're saved, then Paul and Peter wouldn't be, Peter, Paul, and all of y'all wouldn't be telling us to live for the Lord and how to grow in him, okay? He will give us the strength and the desire to live for him. We'll know it's not right when we live that way. And then God will chastise us to bring us back into his will because he loves us. But these people just don't trust God. You know, they sound right, but there's a way that seems right to man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Do you understand? It seems right to man to try to live right to earn your way to heaven. It's not you plus put Jesus on top where you fail. No, you get God's imputed righteousness by faith. They don't understand imputed righteousness. See, when you trust in the death, burial, and resurrection, God puts righteousness on you. And he sees you, he goes, she's perfect. He's perfect because they're in my son. He doesn't even see your sin anymore in the flesh. Because your spirit is now perfect. Because one born of God cannot commit not even one sin. Okay, because that, that spirit, the seed of Christ is in him and he cannot sin. You see, that's what John is talking about. God sees that person. He declares you perfect. And when you get the revelation of that, you'll be free of all this garbage. This is religion. This is every religion on earth with Jesus' name thrown on top of it. Okay? Our faith is different because it's what God did for us and not what we're doing for God. Now, our response for what Jesus did for us 
should be commitment to him. It really should be. But that's not what saves us. Okay? And any person that does that will live a better life. There's no safer place than being in God's perfect will for your life. Okay? But that doesn't save you. That's why I said the harlots and the publicans will enter heaven first. Okay? These people that read the four gospels, they don't understand Jesus preaching to Israel under the law and trying to up the standards to show them how much they needed a savior. And they don't understand that. Repent is not to turn from sin, people. God repented many times in the Bible. He repents more than anyone. All right, if you if you have a misunderstanding of what repent means, look at my videos. There's a, I did one a couple weeks ago that basically went through every verse that said repent and believe to tell you what they were repenting of. And it was always about placing your face from one thing into another. Okay? Sorry, guys. I'm just not feeling well. All right. Bye-bye.